Hey everybody, I have another scrap pile project. I'm going to be making a cast on comb. Yeah, what's that? That's what I said. Um, actually, it's something that's used in the knitting world with knitting machines. It's uh, essentially, it's a bar with hooks on it that hook on to um, knitting as it comes off a knitting machine. So it keeps a constant pressure or, or tension on it. Uh, my friend was looking for one, and uh, the designs, their machine is a little odd, apparently, I don't know, but it, it has an 8 millimeter spacing, and the ones that they could find online, it was like a, a 10 or 12 or 7, they couldn't find the 8. So we took a look online, and there's a couple of designs there based on using uh, paper clips and rulers. Essentially, you bend paper clips and you glue it to in the middle between two rulers. Uh, that didn't look very nice. So we decided upon a design and uh, he sent me a picture and so I've used this picture to come up with uh, some materials. Now I've got three pieces, scrap pieces of spruce here. I did look at pine but pine is a little light and when you want a little weight to it, spruce is a little heavier. So I'm just going to rip these down and I uh, hope you'll follow along to see how the uh, cast on comb takes shape. So the actual design we finally agreed upon is going to be four, four separate shorter combs instead of one big one. Each one would be uh, 264 millimeters long uh, and each one essentially would have 33 hooks with a spacing of 8 millimeters in between and on the ends of each comb there would be a, a, a 4 millimeter Four, mil mil four millimeters in from the end, there would be the first hook, so that when you bought two combs together, that would give you the eight millimeter spacing. And to keep those the two combs from twisting, I'm going to use uh, uh, probably some nails. I'm going to drill some holes and put some nails in the end of one board, so that it can slide in, so they won't twist. But I'll when I, a little later in the video, I'll show you how that works. So now I'm just going to uh, rip the boards to uh, probably an inch and a quarter height and uh, then sand them smooth and then trim them to length. So I've got the four pieces cut. Uh, they're 26.4 centimeters long and I struck the center line down each piece. I measured in from the edge four millimeters. I don't know if you can see that, that point right there. Maybe it's a little too blurry. Uh, and then from there, what I'm using is my little uh, calipers here. I've set it to 8 millimeters, and what I'm doing is I'm essentially walking these two points down the line. Very similar to this, see if I can show you one-handed. So I'll start at the 4 millimeter, which is right there, poke the hole, and then I poked another hole like that. Then I jumped over with that, poke that in there, and another hole there. And I'm going to do that the entire length of that board, or the entire length of that board, and the rest of them. Or maybe I just might, yeah, well, probably what I'll do is that once I get this board done, I'll use my square and just strike lines across to make it easier. And then what I'll do is I'll drill pilot holes in each one of those, and that's where the, uh, I guess, teacup hooks uh, will be screw uh, will be screwed in. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get at poking some holes. So I've got all the lines struck across here. So the intersections I'm going to be drilling holes. So I'm just going to pop over to my drill press here now, where I have chucked up uh, a one sixteenth inch bit, and I'm going to drill the center of those uh, X's to basically they're a pilot hole for the teacup hooks. So there's a bit of lining up here and sometimes the bit does skate over the wood so I have to be a little careful with the drill bit. Start slowly and drill down. I'm doing about I think it's maybe three eighths of an inch deep. That should be plenty of deep for the uh, for the thread of the teacup hooks. 
So I've got all the holes drilled, and now I need to figure a way how to connect them. Um, depending upon how wide the actual um, uh, knitting project is, depends upon how big of a, or how wide of a cast-on comb you need. So what I've done is that I've, uh, see so you can see it there, I've struck the line, uh, I've followed down from the center here, down to the center of the, um, of the edge of the board, and I marked up, I think it's three eighths of an inch, and maybe an inch up from the top. So I'm going to drive in, actually I'm going to drill two pilot holes in there, and then I'm going to put in, um, I, I took some of these uh, inch and a quarter uh, finishing screws, finishing nails, and I cut the end off with my orange handle pliers down right there, and I went over to my grinder, and, and then I ground to fine, uh, ground a fine point on the end, so now they're pointy on each end. I'm going to use those as um, pins, uh, so we'd be able to uh, pull the two ends together. I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm just going to drill two holes in the top here so that it will take the two pins. So I have to keep it, make sure that it's straight, parallel and all that, and just give it a go. One hole. Two holes. And I will take my pins, wherever I have them laid, right here. Here, here's one. Where do they go? Well, got one here, so that'll go in there. And then when I find the other one, I'll poke it. Oh, I've got it. I'll poke that one in here. Like that. Now I'll just give them a little tap of the hammer just to make sure that they're uh, flush. Okay, here's the piece with the two nails in it. Um, instead of me measuring uh, where the holes are to be put on this piece, I've, I'm going to take the actual locations off these two spikes right here. So what I've done is i got a couple of wooden bench dogs popped in there and a little piece of board. Oops, that one popped out. Um, straight piece of board put across there, and I'm using that as a, as a fence for these two pieces of board. So I just push those up against there, make sure I got the, both the, the holes there uh, on the outside, and I'll just push it together. And I'll just give it a little tap over on the end here with the hammer, just to, uh, okay, so we should have two holes, or two marks for two holes, yes we do, right there and right there. So I'll just pop my drill in there. And that should uh, match up perfectly with those two nails in there. So I've got the four short cast off combs done. Um, holes are drilled, uh, sanded, holes are drilled in the end for the pins. And now I'm just uh, firing up my branding iron there to, uh, to burn numbers into the end so we know which end goes into which. And this is where I end the project. I've got uh, four short cast on combs um, and each hole is eight millimeters to the center except for the end ones which are four millimeters in that's because if it's what it needs to be joined for a longer project the two holes will be eight millimeters apart how that's done how these boards are I guess attached is that uh, I've got holes drilled there and I've got these short little metal rods which are basically I think they're inch and a quarter finishing nails that I just uh, ground the ends off and made them to like little metal rods. I have holes drilled there, and as you see, that's number one. And I picked the appropriate uh, other cast off, sorry, cast on comb. That one has a one. And I just line up the holes on there and there, and just push it together. There you have it. You have a longer one. And maybe if it needs some extra rigidity, uh, one of these, uh, like a larger binder clamp could be used just to clamp over the bottom just to give it a little bit more a uh, little bit more stiffness and you know when this needs to come apart just pull it apart like that and the pins just come out you just wiggle them with your finger pull them out put them in storage 
and then you can put this away and you have no worries of, uh, of the metal rods hooking into anything. Um, next thing that needs to be done to make them true cast on combs is to get some T, or get some hooks. Whether um, when you use something like this, like an actual teacup hook, uh, unfortunately this base won't work because it's it's more than eight millimeters across and it'll cover over more than one hole. Um, something like this would probably be more appropriate, a little slighter gauge middle, uh, one in each hole so it can hook on the material. Or, if worst, ca worst case scenario, maybe using uh, larger paper clips and put down each hole and glue them in place. Uh, so there you have it. I uh, hope you like this little project. Uh, this is another one of my scrap pile projects, and uh, thanks for watching.